time. So I want us to review some things and go on a journey. This journey is personal, corporate. This is a journey that Jesus went through himself. It's also personal. That means you will have to go through if you are willing. And then it's a journey the church has to go through before Jesus comes. The church has to go through this. Okay. So this is not my own original teaching. Okay? I've been studying this since 2005, praying about it. Uh, I think the person gave me understanding which you are going to use. You're going to use his chart. His prophet, uh, prophet Bill Hammond. He has shown the history of the church prophetically for 2,000 years and what will happen before Jesus comes back again. But he was not given the details. Now the details, God has been unfolding to other people, people like Navy Johnson, other people now who are able to run with it. But this church is going to really help you. Where, where are you in your life? What is the Lord asking you to press in for? So don't, don't use this to copy people. It will not work. Because your personal journey with the Lord is personal. I was really encouraged last week, I think when we were going to uh, give the glory to prayer, I think we were sitting behind me with my friend Morgan, and asked him a question. I asked him one simple question. Have you read this by the verse that doesn't disturb you like me? By faith. By faith. Enoch. Disappear. <laughs> I say, if he doesn't trouble you, me does. By faith, the guy was able to bypass them and go to heaven direct. By faith, not by anointing, not by glory, by faith. And I tell you, no, know, we discussed at Kachana. If those scriptures don't trouble you, hey, then you're not reading the same Bible. Imagine by faith, the guy, Bible says, he was normal because he pleased God. He was normal. The Lord said, this one cannot stay here. So do not think there are people who have not, I think Enoch went through the seven stages a Christian has to go through, which I'm going to explain. Enoch went through. Because that's the way he went. He was able to go through death without dying, which is transfiguration. That is the destiny of the church. The Bible says that all of us may attain what? The resurrection of the dead. But me, I prefer the transfiguration of my body. It's the same thing, but one, you go through the grave, then you are raised with a new body. Another generation is, they'll be changed from the old body to the new one. So this is a personal work. Enoch did it, Elijah did it, and the other one was who? John the Apostle who never died. He never died. Okay. He just went. So this is something you cannot say that I'm waiting for the church, because Enoch, there was no church at that time. So you can't, I always say, this is a personal challenge to all of us. These stages, the seven stages of a Christian are written in the template of the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. So I think you can project the chart because some of them will go quickly. I want to focus really where we are, where the church is, not where we have come from. Where we have come from, if you know, you need to get help, read church history. Okay? So... Just move it a bit. Okay, if I can see it, you guys can see that. So we need to feel that that you can scroll it. Eh? You know to scroll uh, move the arrow and just pull it aside to feel that. We don't want to use PowerPoint, it will not work. Okay. Okay. So I want you to go, it's this thing is very funny, the patterns Bill Harmon of Sean. Bill Harmon is turning 90, he's very old now. And you're shown when I was a young man, 1950s, then 1970s, the Lord told me I wanted to write a book of the eternal church, the history of the church, what has happened, what is coming. And he's one of the man of God I listen attentively because he has never missed a move of God. Never. And he always says he's praying that he's, he's always contending for the next one as a person. Okay? So, okay, let me use mine as the. Scroll down there, okay. So on the if you're drawing columns, these columns one, two, three, four, five, six. Going down is called a column. Eh? So draw seven columns going down. Then I'll be giving you one, you write across. These are portals, by the way. If you go read the old testament, it will make a lot of sense. The Bible says everything was shadows written in the old testament were fulfilled in Christ. 
because they are fulfilled in Christ, they're supposed to be fulfilled in us and the church. This is the destiny of the church. The church has covered most of it. We have a very little time remaining for them. So let me throw a spanner in your head. How many days did God create the world? On the seventh day, he rested. So you know, a thousand. One day is a thousand, okay? So we know creation took 7,000 years. Redemption will take 7,000 years. Because the Bible says a day is one time. Listen to me. If you did, you may have never felt biology. So I know what I'm saying. I know physics. Chemistry, oh, physics was an issue, but chemistry, no. Chemistry, physics, I passed Nini Ponyoka. Not only escaped the judgment, praise the Lord. <laughs> but physics, biology, and chemistry, me, I was a working biologist. Okay. And if you study the history of the earth, there are layers. So when the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, actually, you can delete, I can send you another copy here. If you delete that thing to get the space, okay? Now listen to me. Between Genesis 1 and 2, there's a creation. There's a big creation. One was perfect, one was spoiled. So the Lord started recreating up. It took 7,000 years for him to place man on the earth. Now you guys are saying, really? We have been told. Okay. That's what they say, but some things don't make sense. So normally say, the Bible is not against science. There are many parts of science that agree with God. It's just the counting. Okay? So God, we have dating system, carbon dating, all those things. Those things have been found. Like a good example, maybe you're arguing with me. You have heard there were dinosaurs on the earth. Where are they? See, all of us know they were here. How, how comes you have never seen them in the Genesis? When did they live on this earth? Before creation or before the flood? Hallelujah. Those who have watched those movies from Hollywood, those people are not lying sometimes. <laughs> they are not lying. Sometimes they are lying, but that's why they are not lying. They are dinosaurs. Okay? So what has God has done, the redemption of man, he says, let there be, let there be, let there be. Then the seventh day he rested. Then the next time he picks man from the ground. So did he create man or did he make man? The one he made on last day, let us make man. Yeah. Who was that? Was it Adam or someone else? Really, are you sure? I think God knows English. I talked English a second time. <laughs> he says create, you create from nothing. Make, you make from something. Yes. Man was made from something. Yes. Man was not created from nothing. Abba? He's created him in his image, but did he create from nothing? No. You are created from something, from the earth. Yeah. What about the sixth one? He says, oh, let us make man like ourselves. Who was he? Was he Adam? No. no. Hey, my friend. <laughs> so in the Bible, when he says, let us make man, in the Bible, where two people are called sons of men or sons of God, angels and human beings. All of them are called sons of God. One are from the first estate, creation, and others were made. Man was made, my friend. Tell your neighbor you were made. Yes. You are not created from nothing. God had to pick something, take a whole day. I don't know how long it took to. <laughs> then he breathed in it. God never spoke man into existence. He created him personally with his own hands. There are many scriptures that confirm him. He says he made it from dust, and to dust he will return. Man, Adam means Adam. Adam means blood and soil. Okay? So that was the last stage. When he had created creation, then he brought man. He created man from the earth, saying, now this is yours. So these arguments, if you read the theologians, they say that those who believe in the seventh day, others believe this other side. But me, I believe to make sense, it is important to separate the two creations the creation of the universes and the creation of man. Because man found the world already made. He didn't create anything. He was just given a title to take. So, it take, took 7,000 years for the Lord to reach that stage. Listen to me. Have you ever asked your neighbor, how, before Adam sinned, 
How old was he? You know, we could count age from the day he sinned. Mm. Yes, if you read the Bible, from when he sinned, then mm. counting star. Before that, Adam lived in eternity. Mm. He had no time, space, and matter. I'm very convinced Adam came to Africa. Because when he was the lion came, he, he named it. <laughs> There are no lions in Europe, but they, they have never been lions in Europe. It's too cold. If you read the book of Job with the painted details, it talks about lions, rivers, but today is a desert. What happened? So Adam had capabilities we don't have today. And it has never been restored except Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ has reached that capability. And when, before he comes, there's a group of people who will be raised up to be restored. But we are, living, we are living in a very limited stage of what Adam knew. What does he feel? The guy he knew, let, you know some people doubt Adam, he knew all the animals. Let me tell you, if you're doubting, don't doubt Solomon. Solomon, the Bible says he named all these animals through wisdom. And he wrote pro Proverbs. So that ability exists. He did it for Adam, he did it for Solomon. Me, I like reading my Bible. Sometimes I read the other day, and Israel was the richest country on the earth during the time of Solomon. You know, it doesn't make sense. It was bigger than Assyria, Babylon. They were the richest country. Gold was everywhere as a currency. It doesn't make sense until you realize what was happening at that time. Okay? So, God took seven days to create seven days to do regeneration, recreation. We have the season of recreation. Because when man fell, the Lord decided to start afresh. And the Bible says it will take 7,000 years. 6,000 years for man, 1,000 years for the kingdom of Jesus on earth. Then he finishes, then you start eternity. So this is called in science an interlude. You know interlude? Interlude, we messed up his program. So he stopped everything and said, now let's do recreation before we continue where we left. Where did he live? In the Garden of Eden. When Adam sinned, the tree of life was taken to heaven. We meet it in the new heavens and the new earth. So tell you, my neighbor, you are in the interlude. Be nice. Because the other ages come coming. Bible says in the ages past, this present age and the ages to come. How many are they? Fourteen. The fourteen ages. <laughs> ages of creation, ages of recreation. Now we're in the present evil age, which is seven thousand years. For God to restore everything that we lost in the Garden of Eden. I always tell people, God is not restoring us to be like Israel. That's bad theology. When I was young, that's what people talk. That is wrong. God is restoring us to become like Adam and Eve, not become like Moses or Aaron. Those guys are poor photocopy of Adam. Adam knew a lot. Emma? I know you're wrestling with that. Some of you say you have the spirit of Moses. As you have the spirit of Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> Sure. The second Adam. Because sure. Jesus came to restore man fully. Okay? So, the same way, there are these seven times, creation, seven times, redemption, now God puts it in the Bible. And he repeats it many times. Number one, so, can you move, uh, can you, I think you can move sideways, eh? So I have to just show them titles. So, you see the church restoration? There's, that's the main one, but there's the biblical experience we are going to talk about, because those are personal experience. But you see, he's using example of Hebrews 6, the journeys of Israel from Egypt to Zion, then Ezekiel, remember the bond, the dry bonds? You remember the river of Ezekiel, that 47, and also the tabernacle, of all of them are seven stages. Everything is in seven. You have to go through the seven stages to become a mature Christian. You have to. And you have to decide whether you have to do it or not. And you find in church history, people stop anywhere. Unfortunately. Okay? So a good example, let's just go the spiritual experiences. That one's a good. We have number one, justification by faith. That's the first stage for a Christian. You must be born again. To be redeemed, to be recreated, to become like Adam, like Jesus, the second Adam, you have to be born again. If you're not born again, it will never work. You have to become a new creation. The next stage is called sanctification. 
So you write it going down. Eh? That's a column. You write it going down. The first one is justification. The second one is sanctification. The third one is what? Manifestation, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And in the church history, we can know what really happened. There was repentance preached by Martin Luther. Sanctification was preached by John Wesley. Manifestation of Pentecostal pioneers. They preached it. They're still preaching it. Then number four is manifestation, which is through the laying on of hands, which is called charismatic movement, where the manifestation of gifts, 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 are part of our restoration. Now, I know this is true because Adam had capabilities that we didn't have that the Lord is restoring to the church. Adam knew God, so God could share with him secrets. The Bible says the Lord will come and talk to him what? In the evening, in the cool of the day. So, he had access to heavenly realities that even us, we have not reached. We don't have. You guys, I know you are new. Don't worry. Those guys who, who have never been here, this is like sounding new. Don't worry, you will reach there. The reason is, if we don't help ourselves to know the patterns, we will never walk in them. Please. And you think where you have reached, you have reached. Okay, I don't want to give examples because you will laugh, okay? If your greatest aim is to get a wife or a husband and you think you have reached, then you have a very big problem in this world. You're not different from Genesis 4, 4, 5. This man and wives, they lived and died and no went. That is not why we are here. It's part of the promise, whether it's part of the promise, because marriage is his idea. But that is not why you are here. I've never, I'm always surprised when people get married, they stop coming to prayer meetings. <laughs> they stop fasting. Then we know, we know you. Actually, I've been to here for almost eight years as a pastor. I've seen a lot. So I can tell you some of the things I've seen. Someone comes to church, they always cancel for pants. We pray for them, we cancel them. People give them food, they go to school, do everything. They get a job, they disappear from church. So you came for a job. That's what I've seen. Some of them are in Kitangala, some of them are moved to Nairobi. And when you meet them, they don't even want to greet you because they have a nice job. <laughs> are you here because of a job? Why did you get born again? Or some people get married because they want children. And God can be gracious, can give you as many as you want. After the womb, or you get old, what happens? After your children leave your house, you stop serving God. I'm you go post in the village, you go to Kijiji, you go to Otano. That is not something to post, my friend. Which kind of children are they? You know those questions now? So I always say, we need to be more spiritual than that. Please. I know we need to pursue these blessings. And let me tell you, in the heart of God, if you look at Adam or the first generation, these people live for a thousand years. God gave them all those stuff. God is not against us. Actually, I think the reason they live long, there are no curses on this earth. No one had bewitched another person. <laughs> Until Lamech came, Lamech, Lamech, the grandfather of Noah. That girl was complicated. Two wives. <laughs> That's when the earth started having problems. Yeah. If, you know, if you read the Bible and you read the other books, the Book of Jubilee, they explain the details, the quarrel of his wives. Hey, Lamech, I sympathize with that guy. Until he cast a lot of things. So that's when problems start coming on there. On the earth. But it was not so in the beginning. We didn't have these things. Most of that generation, you have had to teach, I will teach it until Moses came to write the Bible. There was no Bible. There are just people writing copies of books, keep aside. But you notice up to Moses, all these people could see in the spirit. They were seers. Job, Job, Job who lived the time of Abraham was a seer. Abraham was a seer. These guys had no Bible. So I always tell people, please don't play with our game. The Bible is very important for us to stay in the faith. But don't tell, tell me God is hiding in the Bible. Jesus said himself, these scriptures point to me. You read them and come to, to me. A Bible is supposed to direct you to the Lord. And the Lord is not the Bible. That's an approved. Because when I worked with Muslims, Muslims who come to Christ without a Bible, they have this encounter with the Lord. The Lord appears to them, sometimes disciples them, sends them to church, and they have never seen a Bible. Are we, are we understanding? 
The Bible, if it does not give you an encounter with the living God, you're not reading your Bible well. The Bible is important. It's supposed to make sure, like, it's, like I like the way Konanga number says. Look, I like Konanga. Konanga says, open Ezekiel chapter 1. Press the, then he says, in the year, in the 30th year of Ezekiel. You know that scripture he likes teaching? I saw visions. Then he says, let's pray. God opened my eyes. You see what? Yes. Bible is supposed to direct you to experience it. There's no need of me telling me, oh, Ezekiel was a seer, Jeremiah was a prophet, and then it's history. It, it doesn't sound good to me to the Father, because where is the evidence of his reality in our lives? Where is the evidence? Are you satisfied with reading things in the Bible? T. Osman used to say in his sermons, there's a sermon he listen, he'll, he'll talk about Jeremiah, then he said, Jeremiah is dead, but we're alive. So this prophecy is ours. He may believe every part of the Bible. But they know if you, many people try to analyze your husband as an evangelist. The guy is not an evangelist. Me, I don't know what he was. To tell you the truth, because this guy, he was an evangelist, he was a pastor before, he was an apostle, he worked in creative miracles, he saw manifestations of Jesus alive in stadiums. Me, I think he was a prototype of a son of God. That guy, you can't put him in a fivefold ministry. Because he used to say, if it's in the Bible, it's mine. He'll take the one of Moses, take the one of Elijah, so you could not define him. I think where we are going, that's what the Lord wants us to be. Okay? I'm not saying the fivefold ministry will, will, will end, they, they are needed. But I think they limit the church a lot. Hallelujah? Yeah, yeah. especially the current crop. Hmm? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so the next one, this. Charismatic movement of ministration, that means gifts are very important. The reason I'm saying it, there's this theology when I was a young Christian, I remember in campus, people say, you know, fruit of the Spirit is more than gifts of the Spirit. I want to say, my friend, all of them are from the Holy Spirit. Just sober up. One may get you in heaven, but one will make you work here on earth. Which one do you want? Both. Both. Me, I have to make sure the devil runs around a bit. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit can never help you with those things. Let me, I've seen nice Christians with the fruit of the spirit, the devil sitting on them. Mm -hmm. Because they can't rebuke the enemy. Mm -hmm. So I only say, if it comes from the Holy Spirit, do not select. That one, there's no much for choice. That's why the Lord is restoring the child. The reason he restored justification of, first then he brought sanctification, because holiness is important to carry the gifts. So before he brought gifts, he brought what? Sanctification through John Wesley. The Holy, then he brought Pentecostal movement. All Pentecostals came from the holiness movement, by the way. All of them. Then after that, now Pentecostals, those days, if you read those books, they are very interesting. If you are to get the Holy Spirit, they say you go and tarry. No tarry. You go to a forest and tarry. Wait until the power falls. They were reading Luke 24, 49. Go and wait in Jerusalem. They didn't know Jesus resurrected. Do you know that? Because of Jesus resurrected. Have you ever seen someone tarrying for the Holy Spirit? But did God honor them? Yes, they got the Holy Spirit. Until people came like and hanging through a charisma. God says you don't need to wait. Lay hands on people. Just pray for them. Like apostles. And they'll get what? The Holy Spirit. Both methods work. One is longer. <laughs> Some people tarried and got nothing. And they gave up on the Lord. Okay? Then after that, he brought what? We are in the season of glorification. Okay? Now the charismatic movement was 1950. Now, there are many things that have happened in between. The intercessors were restored. Yeah, pastors were restored in 1950. Bible teachers, eventually 60s. Teachers, 70s. Prophets, 80s. Apostles, 90s. But it's still the charismatic movement. It's just restoring it. Until the Lord said, now nah, enough, I've completed my body. There's a government, now nah, move on. Now the church is the season of glorification. And Bill Hammond was shown, Rick Jonah was shown, Neville Johnson was shown. The glorification began in 2005. The church started crossing her Jordan. And the only the reason you cross your Jordan is to fight battles. That's why you find this generation, it is very difficult to be a Christian. It's not like, you know, was, I like Pastor Bale when I was young. I used to go see him, he used to stay in his lane. He told me one time, you know, you can be a Christian in Nairobi, you don't pray, you don't fast, you don't read the Bible, but you love the Lord. 
Because in Kairi, Nairobi, everyone is praying. Pray. After 2005, my friend, it ended. You try to live like that, you'll backslide the next day. Because the Lord in his program released a battle on the earth. The, I really believe the, the vision of the journal shown the end time battle began in 2005. Where the Lord says the church will fight until the earth shall become the inheritance of the Lord. So me understand people, you're not going to heaven, my friend. We're here to, if you want to go, please go. We're here to make sure we do our part. We have to fight the battles for our children so that the, the destinies we carry, they don't have to lose them again. And Bill Hammond was told, the same way Joshua had to conquer Canaan land, the church has been called to conquer the earth and bring the king from heaven. And the Lord told him, it's the church that will bring the Jesus back, not the opposite. Jesus is not going to rapture us because you have to run away. He is coming because the bride is ready. The bride has to overcome. And the last thing they think the bride is going to overcome is death. So there will be a generation that will never die. Please believe me. If you don't, maybe you are supposed to go home. Because <laughs> if it's not, you can't believe that. Everything is by faith. If you don't believe there's a transfiguration like Enoch, like Elijah, like Apostle John, then you're not part of us. You will help us until the day we say, you are got you home. And it's okay, at least you are right. Yeah, Moses is in heaven, he died. Don't mind. So I always say, do not take this truth. You know, when people teach those things, when I was young, I used to go read these uh, messages or people read these hymns. You know, when I cross the Jordan and I go the other show, then I realized, Bill Hammond said, why are you talking like that? Jordan is not about dying to go to heaven. It's dying to self. So that you conquer what? Your giants. That's the last battle, okay? So it began in 2005. So let's see, okay? That one will come back later. So the equivalent is called glorification. You have heard the Bible says the church must be justified, sanctified, and glorified before Jesus comes. Jesus went to heaven. Was he sanctified or glorified? Glorified. glorified. So that's the pattern. The, the idea of telling people be glorified when you reach in heaven, then what was Jesus doing here and what did uh, Enoch do here? They will think I know you're a Bible teacher. What do we do? Those things we read from theologians. I'm like, why, is he, why are we afraid to be glorified? Why are we afraid to be transfigured and be changed to be like him? And it's not just, people think of the power and the glory. Me, I told someone, it's not the power and the glory. It's the transfiguration of yourself. Where you move from, become a true son of God. You are not limited by the things that limit people anymore. If the Lord says today, I want you to go and preach the gospel, go and preach. If today he says, go sweep the church, you go sweep the church. You are a son. You obey the Father. You don't say, that's not my calling. Before you cross the Jordan, you have to arrange people. Okay? But if you cross the Jordan, the army spreads out. So, actually, that's the thing you're teaching. They, they, these young people of Kaoskari said, they gave us this scripture, Ezekiel 37 verse 10, and a great exceeding army of the Lord. I'm like, God, do they know what they want? That's the theme of the conference. Okay, Friday they will see it. It's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're thinking that you'll be a powerful man on the earth. You'll have to die a million times to be part of the army. That army has no self. They only do what the Lord says. You know, we have these Hollywood things in the church that are not good. You have to be the biggest star. Everyone should come to you. There's nothing like that. You're supposed to go to Jesus, my friend. Jesus is the only star in this generation. Mm -hmm. So people have to, okay, when you reach there, we'll talk to them on Friday, okay? So he says the glorification is represents the resurrection of the dead, crossing the Jordan. Ezekiel 37 says, ye shall live. Ezekiel 47, life. Ezekiel, um, the tabernacle is the veil and the coverings. We are in the season of the church breaking down the veil. And Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews, Jesus is what? The veil. Say the veil is his, bo his body. So we have known Jesus in a different way. Now Jesus is trying to say, through me you can access the other side. If you come through the blood and you come through the Holy Spirit, you will come through. But you have to die to self. Mm -hmm. 
The veil, you know, the veil is, if you read uh, Exodus 39 40, when I was just reading this morning, you'll find something very funny. The veil, before the veil was the altar of incense, eh? actually, it used to be placed outside. But now, during the time of Solomon, it was placed what? Inside, because people were having problems. When the smoke will start rising, the veil will split itself. It was not opened by human being. Because once it opened, they could see the Shekinah glory. But when the Temple of Solomon was built, it was moved from outside the holy place and put inside the most holy place. Because every time people have encounter with that thing, they are never the same. Do you know the founder of the Nazarene church? The founder of the Nazarene church, in the holiness movement, one time he was praying, and he saw this angel coming with a fire from that incense and touched him. True story, that's how the Nazarene church began. It's a holiness church. Isaiah, when that, you see that thing and the fire coming, the seraphims are coming, my friend. The fire is always to cleanse. What the Lord is saying, we will not go through our Jordan without cleansing. You are a good Christian, you love the Lord, you are born again, you are spirit filled, but you have been defined by many things. God is not cleansing us from sin, He's cleansing us from the consequences of sin. Because the blood washes our sins, but the fire purifies. You understand the difference? Yeah. So the blood is, or you're already saved. You're okay. You have passed, you have had your Passover, you have crawled your Red Sea. You're a good Christian. But for you to reach the other side, a time will have to come. You tell the Lord, send the fire. Cleanse me from all these things that limit me. And that's the only way you will be able to become what? You shall live. Okay? Okay, we'll, we'll stay there. Then the next one is the army of the Lord, okay? Which is adjudication. Okay? And that's the eternal judgment. The conquering of Canada, the exceeding great army, the mighty place judge, the ark and the covenants. Now you have crossed the others. I like the tabernacle because it's easy for me. The others is difficult to imagine in my head because the tabernacle can imagine. It's a building. These ones I don't know. But you see the ark and the covenant are the other side. Eh? And only that the high priest could access it. But through Jesus Christ, he says all of us can do what? Please, I remember I told this thing a few years ago. I picked it very long. Here people talk these things. Even great men of God, I'm like, hey, like the way you're talking, you're talking like Old Testament Christian. So people say, you hear people say in public, oh, only, only men of God can do these things. Presidents cannot do these things. We are the, they are kings, you are priests. What are you saying? Ask your neighbor, what are you saying? In the Old Testament, kings and priests were say, separate. But in the other side, all of us have become what? Kings and priests. So President Bruton can go to prayer meeting and fast and go to work. He doesn't need a pastor. This is the idea of saying that you need a pastor to clean the state house. Doesn't make sense. Why are you born again? Okay, let me bring it home. How many have called a pastor come and pray and dedicate my house? You no, know, most times people are sending those messages. I will write the prayer for them and tell them to dedicate your house to yourself. Excellent. What are you doing? Why do you think that I'm better than you, and you're a priest, and you're a king? But then people have done, even this other day, someone sent me that prayer. <laughs> Brother Quinga, I told him, you say, I told him, okay, I'll write for you, I'll send to you, go and do it for yourself. You don't need a pastor to come and pray for your house, my friend. Actually, me, I don't like it, because I like, I like, I like, I learn the opposite, it's not good. It's not good, you cannot go to someone's territory and start jumping or dealing with their altars and they like those altars. Do you know, as from experience, it doesn't work. You have been called to pray for someone's house, but you don't know they keep juju. What are you going to do? <laughs> then you go back to the juju following, why did you come to my house? Because that person never repented. They didn't cleanse the house, they didn't correct the error so that the blessing of God can come. But they were thinking that your power can overcome the juju, but they like it. So me, I don't go to people's houses. I'm not saying don't invite me, I just don't like it. <laughs> because that theology of saying only a pastor can dedicate your house, that is Old Testament thinking. So the same thing, in New Testament, every Christian can access the Father. Through Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews, I'm studying Hebrews, he has gone through the veil as a forerunner to the 
so that we can follow him. So we don't have to rearrange ourselves. You wait, when these things start happening on the earth, you'll be shocked what's going to happen. I'm not saying it's good, but God has to do it because to cross from that glorification to taking care of the earth. God is going to have many believers experiencing their inheritance and many pastors will not enter. Please. They will not enter because they are still thinking like Old Testament people. We need to mature that the Lord came to give us a priesthood of who? Melchizedek, who are kings, priests, and prophets at the same time. And it's a stage you grow through. So I'm not saying it's automatic. You have to grow one. You have to become a good priest. Then they say, now learn become a king, then a prophet. Or sometimes the Lord starts with prophets. Do you know prophets are very, very big issues? Mm -hmm. If you stay close to prophets like me, they have bigger problems than you have thought. They hear God, they can process everything, but tell them, do this. They start daydreaming. They want another word to do it. And God is saying, just do it. So I realized when you have spiritual sight, this is a danger I've seen. When you have spiritual sight, you can see in the spirit. It is very easy to live without faith. Faith means you don't see. That's the definition of faith. You act on the word, on the word, whether I see it or not. So that's why I've seen prophets like, God told you to do this. I'm still praying about it. He has to show me details. God told you to go to Mombasa. I'm still praying where to go to Mombasa. He cannot show you to go to Mombasa until you arrive in Mombasa. Mm. So go, take a train and go to Mombasa, start prayer walking that we do. The Lord will show you this is not the place, this is not the place. But if you stay in Nairobi until you are shown and you don't know Mombasa, you are tempting the Lord. Do you like what I'm saying? Mm. The Lord does not use what you don't know. Please. So that's their problems I've seen with prophetic people. And it's not, it's not bad. They also need a problem. <laughs> It's good. And then those of us who don't see, now we are the opposite. We just go by faith. We make mistakes, but it works. So, how many of you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't over-process things of God. But then let me tell you, the, the way I've learned, not Kenyan seers, but there I read a lot of seers like Joyner, these people don't know everything. They are very annoyed, but they don't know everything. Like the Lord can hide something right in front of you and you are the greatest seer on the earth. You know, one day I'll have to ask God, how is it possible? You have opened someone's spiritual side, but you can't even see a problem here. Or even in front of him. That means in my, the spiritual, there are dimensions of seeing. Eh? There are stages and combined. And you need a combination lock to work everything. God can only say, today I only go to see angels. No demons here. But does he mean there are no demons here? Yeah. No, he's hiding in his shadows. Yeah. Then there are these prophets, you only see demons, don't see angels. They're not bad prophets. They're like Jeremiah. They see doom. Boop, boop. <laughs> no, Jeremiah. Everything he said was bad. So people don't like him. But was he a bad prophet? No, he was faithful. But you see, don't blame them. Why is he this person only sees bad things in my life? That is their calling. Please. They're like Jeremiah. They didn't see anything good in Israel. Okay. <laughs> okay, then if uh, me, I've read people like that, like Rick John, if you read his books, he only sees men in white. Yeah. His books, he doesn't see, rarely does he see angels and demons. Only men in what? Yeah. Joseph, Peter, yeah. Elijah. Mm -hmm. Then you read Anna Roundtree. She only sees eh? angels. Like, what is it? And all of them are in the same heaven, eh? Yes. Mama, if, what do we do? Do you know if it doesn't trouble you, it means God will only show you what is relevant to your call. Yes. Please. And that's why you need other people to help you to see what you cannot see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then this, so normally there's men and white angels, then those who see that, that, the lady who wrote the book Going to Hell, what was her name? Mary Baxter. Baxter. She only sees demons and hell. Mm. It's a good book to wake you up, but you can't read it twice. Mm. I promise you, you cannot read that book twice. You will not sleep. <laughs> She only sees demons everywhere, but it's still the same law. No. no. I would encourage you to read those books because I don't know how those theologians work, but I can tell you God is trying to say there are many things you don't know. You don't know. And then you know we have had. How many heavens do you have? Some people say three. I think in Chile, there are seven. 
It's not in the Bible. But I think it's the Bible. If you listen to these things I'm teaching, there are only seven stages of God. God has never done anything less than seven. The seven colors of the rainbow. The seven spirits of God. So, they, they have, what you know, Paul, those who went to heaven, of course, some people say, some say, there is no heaven like that. It's because what you saw. And you think that's the only thing that exists? Then there are people who say, I used to read this book, Throne Room Companies. They only know how to go to the throne to work until you realize God doesn't just live on the throne. He has another throne somewhere. And he has a mountain he spends time. Are you struggling like me? I'm just trying to say, when you reach that stage, glorification, I really want to be, I really don't know how many people have crossed the Jordan that I can never define. But one thing I know, when you cross the Jordan, something stops in your life. You cannot Jordans come and giants arrive. You have bigger problems to solve. Okay. But what I want to encourage you, to cross from one barrier to the next. Let's say from justification, you have to be half faith. From sanctification is by faith. Receiving the Holy Spirit is by faith. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, by the way, they work by faith. It's an anointing, but it's activated by faith. To cross the other stage, now you start being transformed to cross your Jordan. You will have, it's something, it's not a place you're crossing, it's an experience you are going through. So when you wake up, you say, oh, this problem I used to struggle, it's done. Suddenly this problem has gone. That means in your mind, the Lord has changed something, some things. So I don't know where you are, okay? The one, the one we are fighting up to now, I can tell you, is crossing the Jordan. It started in 2005, I believe it will end in 2025. These things people talk about 2025, because the church has not entered adjudication becoming the army of the Lord. Bill Hammond has a book written in 2018, The Army of the Lord. I think he wrote it before time. And he was even told the weapons they will use. I've only experienced that in a few moments. You know, there are weapons in the spirit. Kuna... Kuna catapults. Kuna hammers. That will be part of the army of the Lord. There are people who have experienced those things. God says, take the hammer. Or like the covenant of death. How do you deal with the covenant of death? Isaiah says, I will bring a scourge to break what? The covenant of death. Covenant of death. A scourge is a weapon. East wind is a weapon. West wind is what? They are also in the Bible. So that's the stage the Lord is preparing the church because you have to deal with nature. The only person I know I've experienced those funny, funny things is going on. Because he likes warfare. So I think he's ahead of us. Yeah. He, he can activate all those things. And the Lord taught him their weapons. The way they are written in the Bible is not just, you know those things, sledgehammers that Gideon was using, or the fire running around. The Lord told him it's a weapon. Do the same. So I want to encourage you. Are you crossing a Jordan? Or where are you? Is, all of us are born again here, so I don't think you're struggling with justification of faith. Are you now in the wilderness letting the Lord deal with the flesh, the world, and the Satan in your life so that you can reach your Jordan well? The wilderness was prepared to remove Egypt from the people. <laughs> so God tested them, tested them, tested them. I need to deal with this, I want to deal with this, I want to deal with this. It took 40 years. Like we, I think Steve shared in the morning, I think it was in the spirit. It doesn't know how long how it takes. Just go through the process. Amen. Mm-hmm. When you reach adjudication conquering canon, that exceeding great army coming on the earth, I believe that period will be activated during the time of the Antichrist. Those guys are going to run Satan around in this world that the way has never seen. But at the same time, Satan will be killing a lot of people. But that exceeding great army, they will fill the earth all over the place. There will be Goshen's, protected places, safety places, where people can go to be fed and be taken care of. The reason I want to share this message, eh, we'll hear more details later. Please remember, all of us are candidates. This is not for some people. You can choose to be part of the exceeding great army, or you can decide to 
I think no one died after the Jordan. Everyone had to go and fight. <laughs> so if you cross the Jordan, you are safe. There are things you have to do, the Lord says, now you are safe. Those who did not cross, the Lord told you you cannot cross. This is, this, this, the, the Caleb and the Joshua only can go that direction. I don't know where your faith is. And let me tell you, the Lord is very nice to us. So me, I see problems in a nice way. You know, some of the problems the Lord releases in our lives, it's not because he's the devil. The Lord is saying, now we need to move. You have enjoyed salvation for too long. You always talk about uh, regeneration, how Jesus is a nice savior. Then you sing these songs, oh, Jesus loves me. The blood washes away all my sins. Then he tells you, my friend, move on. <laughs> Start talking about holiness in your life. So sometimes the Lord troubles the waters to wake us up, lest you become comfortable. Some people are very comfortable with Passover. The Lord says, you can't stay there. I need an army on this earth. Please, I need an army. Me, I'm praying all of us, or a few of us, or a critical of us, will become part of this army. Yeah. Yeah. We must be fighters. And let me say, don't worry. It's not, it's not the spiritual experience. 70s will be a unique army. This army will have unique capabilities. I think that we just was, was told they'll be going to heaven getting what? The blueprint and come for the enemy. They no longer be from human beings. Revelation 12. That's the only way they'll throw Satan on this earth. You know Satan is going to be thrown here for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, wake up, he's coming here. <laughs> His headquarters is second heaven for now. Oh. For two thousand. The Lord says Revelation 12. And they ascended and threw him on the earth. Yeah. And the angel Michael helped them. And then the Bible, the woo, the Bible says now, the woe to those who live on the earth. You know you're on the earth. <laughs> Choose which side you'll be. Are you running or being run after? <laughs> I'm doing a study on this. This guy said, what people don't know is coming on the earth. When Satan arrives here, either you'll be demon possessed or spirit filled. There'll be no neutral person this time. So get used to the Holy Spirit. There'll be no neutral. Either, even your brothers, They'll have, they'll have a cloud of darkness or the cloud of glory. There will be no in between. Those who are in between, you have to hide them. And you try to wipe out every human being, but you will not succeed. Actually, the opposite will happen. It will be the greatest word. Salvation story on this earth. Millions will come to the kingdom. Even those people thought they can never get saved. Because when they see this light activated, the glory of the Lord, that will be the conquering army will have power to recreate darkness and create light at the same time. <coughs> when you hear, oh, God power darkness on the seat of the Antichrist, who will be doing it? Not God. These guys, the army of the Lord. Okay. How, many, how many have read Revelation with their eyes awake? <laughs> Not as a theologian. You know, those things don't find it nice. That we have this thing that we bite in people, people are looking for death and there's no death. Imagine, no one will die and you're being beaten. Going to take away death for six months. So that means there'll be no matchery for six months. Imagine. <laughs> but these things are biting big. Then I read the other day there'll be murders. There'll be all these things happening on the earth. But people will refuse to repent. Then they'll say, God says, increase it. Say, it will be a mess. Me, I, I, sometimes I say, if you are weak hearted, ask God to go home. <laughs> This is not the game. And no president will be in control. These guys like jump. They're jumping. There'll be vampires looking for them. No vampires and those Draculas, they're coming back. No, they're coming back. And people have been shown they're coming back. And the Lord said the church has to overcome vampires, Draculas, all those crazy things, and the aliens. Then Jesus can come. What the Lord said, we have to become like the Lord. We have to conquer this earth for the Lord. This is his inheritance, my friend. Satan was, he's a squatter, this was his prison, now we'll send him what? To help the eternal fire properly. The mistake you will make is to come on this earth for three and a half years. <laughs> hey, Bible, if you read Revelation 12, I always read slowly. And the kingdoms of this world, Revelation 11, 15, became one. The kingdoms of his Christ and his God. No, people don't see that verse. People see the Antichrist. Me, I see that one. Because the day he jumps on this earth, a war is declared. You only have three and three years and six months to finish the job. And Satan, Jesus says, now, 
where well, grinders overcome, go to prison for a thousand years, waiting. We need to know who we are called to be. Your life problems you are going through are preparing for what is coming. Some of us must come, reach a point that we go beyond the endurance. I have, I don't know, I've seen in the military on your scouts, sometimes they'll train you these extreme uh, exercises that stretch you, you, even tears come out, but when you finish, you have become a man. How many were scouts here? What? <laughs> what are girl, girl guys? Who was, no one was a scout here. Who was a scout? Did you do those extreme exercises? Walking on the mountains? You walk until your legs cannot walk, but they tell you keep walking. Hey. You know what? Training endurance. The church doesn't have endurance. We don't have endurance, we don't have patience, we don't have fortitude, we give up too easily. Okay? We give up too easily. Where you come, we are going, you need spiritual endurance, mental endurance, and physical endurance. You will need to be strong. You need to learn a lot of things. How many, how many can make tea? You know how to cook strong tea. You know, let me tell you, when those things began, supermarkets will close. So young people, no more picking chapatis from supermarkets. <laughs> Learn to cook. Those things will dry. But then they are really planning in detail. They are really planning in detail. You will not buy food if you don't have those digital numbers. So how will you eat, Ted? And you can't cook again. If I had chips, Domino's, shh, drop it. There will be no one dropping this time. Because the guy dropping may be part of them. Then, then, maybe he's an agent. Okay, maybe Johnson was told by the Lord, the church needs to prepare for everything. This idea of teaching a rapture, you're lying to you, because what do you eat? You need to know, Barry Smith is to teach us. You need to know how to do dressmaking. You need to have schools. You need to have your own doctors. <coughs> Born again, people can do referrals, because there'll still be accidents. And there'll be no supernatural healing. We, the Lord told him these things will be needed because these are war between men and men, not demons and who? The Antichrist men and the godly men. When the angels, when you have finished, the angels will come and help us. But when you can't do it, they don't need to help us. We'll have to fight step by step. Let me tell you, Acts 2, not a, Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. Mm. It will be fulfilled. Mm. Please believe me. Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance and the arms of the earth as a possession. Because he's talk, the Father is talking to the Son to ask. But we'll be part, maybe, uh, someone, I don't know, one of the guys came to, the guys who came in front uh, to be prayed for. Listen to me, you know you chose to be born this time. Ungakata, You have to understand. Yeah. If you can, you know the season you can. Some of you are wishing I was here when Jesus was on the earth. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. You can, you know, when, when Bible says you choose to come on the earth, the spirits of men are always crying out, let me go, let me go, he says go. So you are right, stop complaining. Stop complaining. I prefer that victorious theology, that the theology of telling me I'm running away. Running, going where? And I agree to come. You do, are you forced to come here? You will have told a Job and Jeremiah who said, I cast the person who announced what? My bath, cast them, but you are right. <laughs> you should have told her, I should have never, I should have died in my mother's womb. Then you'll have gone back. But because you're determined to live here, don't give up in the middle of the way. Do you know it's very difficult for a child to come from a womb? Have you ever seen a little lady gave you birth? I want to send you one day to a maternity. These days they allow men to go snookerly. Uh, you go. My friend, you really respect your wife. Even carrying that child for nine months. Hey, it's a lot of work. And this child is like a foreign body. They eat the lady. <laughs> you know they eat the mother. Young men, listen to me, they eat the mother. So the mother has to eat well. They take the calcium. Anything the mother has, they don't have. Give me. And the, the connection between the mother and the child is 100% sealed. 
They cannot communicate some things except food. And then people say, you know, ladies are like this. You try to be pregnant, you'll see. <laughs> Start walking like this. <laughs> you know, sometimes you need to go to talk to people. Me, I talk to people. I talk to Rosa, I talk to Beth. Me says it a bell now. I thought I'm a kata. When I visit a bell, and I tell them, come kill them, kill them. Respect them. Don't just say, ah, oh, you're lazy to do. You try to carry that child three kilograms in a stomach for nine months. It's like a stone. Some of you are very happy. You are four kilos, 4.5. Your mother barely made, barely made it here. You know, the Lord has shown us these things so that we see things in balance. Please, you need to have balance. Even during the Antichrist, people will keep birth, please. And those children have to be taken care of. And there are saints being prepared to take care of that ministry. Because Antichrist will be looking for human sacrifice. And babies is his best option. Please prepare. Cross your Jordan. We always say that thing. And conquering your conquering your kingdom is your inheritance. It's not my inheritance; it's your inheritance. You have to fight for it. Don't let the devil talk you out of your inheritance. After that, in Kufa, when you are trying, I'm talking to some people here. Because oh, you have been told in your family this can never work. Make sure it works for you this time. Because it means in your family, no one has ever crossed that job. Like when you are growing up, the biggest thing in our generation was to go to college. Because our parents, when you did form two, they are form two of colonial days, you got a job, nice job. You reach form two, you are a great man. The government will come and pick you and give you a job in Kenya Post. You guys, now you have to go ahead of her. So don't give up. My uncle speaks from the home, my father, all of them were educated. But do they have a degree? No. Most times, the only 700 people in the country are degrees, University of Nairobi. Now we have thousands and thousands of people. So that means the battles we fought, or they fought, are not ours. Our battles are greater. Don't be nice to yourself. So I remember when I was in high school, when you, when you passed to high school, Everyone would work hard, whether they are relatives, friends. But these days, now it's college. That means the barrier has been raised. So don't be comfortable where you are. Don't stop at form two in the spirit world. <laughs> How many have had dreams that you're still in class doing the exams? Have you ever asked the Lord's class are in the spirit world? Some of you are still at two. You pray in tongues the whole day. Then the Lord says, will you, will you, will you, start to root. You can't even find the devil. But if you see yourself graduating in college in the spiritual, these things I teach people, if you see yourself graduating from a university, you are about to cross the Jordan. Because that's what the Lord says, now we can do business. But if you see yourself repeating class, some people send me dreams, I've seen myself repeating classes, that was in primary. I told him the Lord is telling where you really are, not where you think you are. You may be a very nice Christian, but you're still in primary. That means the basic things of Christ you don't know. You only talk about salvation, healing. I see that's the greatest truth you know. <coughs> when with these things, the church struggles. If we do not understand these things, my friend, we will not survive what is coming. Me, I'll tell you, I'll be a good person. I was taught by David Johnson. These things the church ignores. They say, oh, those are things you should not teach people now. We are not ready. When will you be ready? Is God waiting for you? Do you have his timetable? Tell him, do you ask, do you know the calendar of God, my friend? He'll battle. Do you know which class are we in heaven? You'll be raptured and go. You know he lived as a human being. But he went through the problem. So don't say that I'm waiting for people. You may be waiting for people who will never come. Okay? I was writing to someone, okay, recently. I read a very strange scripture. Can you read then and stop? Okay. Let's go to Ezekiel 28. I read in the NIV because when I was given this scripture for this person, I said, hey, 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 we need to pray for ourselves. Ezekiel 28, you know he's talking about Satan, but I think it's also, before he talks about Satan, he talks about these kind of people that are on the earth. 
Okay, Ezekiel 28. Let's read from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Okay. In the pride of your heart, you say, I'm a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. Now, Tyre was a city in Lebanon that was on the shoreline and in the, an island. It's like Mombasa Island, okay? 28, okay? Then he says, verse 3, are you wiser than Daniel? Is no secret hidden from you. By your wisdom and understanding, you have gained wealth for yourself and amassed gold and silver in your treasures. By your great skill in trading, you have increased what? Your wealth. And because of your wealth, your heart has become what? Proud. So up to this point, he was not talking about Satan. He's talking about this king. But you see, he's asking, are you wiser than Daniel? Yet he says this guy, this king was so wise that he wisdom and understanding that helped him to get to. Tyre was a very rich city. It only can compare to Babylon in Revelation. They were so rich because they knew how to trade. But the Lord is saying, Daniel is still wiser than you. So this is the point I told this person. I really believe there are people God is raising up on this earth, like Daniel, who are wiser than Nebuchadnezzar and King Cyrus. Don't fear these people. And I told this person, I think you're one of them. And God may God have mercy. Daniel was not afraid of these kings, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, King Cyrus, to a point he influenced their foreign policy because he was wiser than them. Those are the people God is saying are bracing up. Those are the people who will be the conquering the land. So that's the wisdom department. We have the understanding department. We have the fear of God department. We have the spirit of mind department. Make sure you know your department. For Daniel, of the seven spirits of the Lord, Daniel was only in charge of what? Wisdom, understanding. If you want to know what a problem is, you look for that. Yes. That combination is good. If you add knowledge, then it becomes better. So I want to encourage you, when we reach there, the Lord will release this particular grace. I'm giving this grace to help people. Maybe we'll be consulting you. You just know how to fix cars. cars. Every car that comes on the market, there are funny cars coming ahead of us. They're electric. I don't know how they're going to be repaired. I don't know, boss, you know you're the technical guy. How do you repair a technical uh, electric car? Sikiisha on a no engine kama laptop. You know that's their plan. Sikiisha on a rush and no engine so that they control people. But there will be people God will raise up will be able to fix those cars. Please. Because they'll be wiser than them. So I don't know what your calling is. I, I, you really need to be comfortable in your, when you give prophetic words, callings of people. People think it's a job. It's not a job. Because you don't know, like a good example, what you call who? Sure. Uh -huh. Because five years they start making sense. You say, oh, someone told me like this. I can't do all these things. So you know you're in big problems. You're like Leonardo da Vinci, you know that guy? who was an artist and a scientist, and no one knew what he was for there. But the things he did for this world, no one has reached. Because if he touch this, it will work. Touch this, it will work. So you have to know, you're not leaving someone's identity. The capabilities the Lord is giving to a generation are unique to deal with what is coming. Please, we need to know, that's what I'm saying, someone said the revival that is coming cannot be compared with what has happened. It will be totally be unique. You know, the other day I've been having dreams of wheelchairs, wheelchairs, wheelchairs. No people walking up. I'm like, then the Lord told me, that is going to be nothing compared to what is coming. You know, people in the 50s, people when Morris Rolo go to a place or can hug in hospital, husband, 50 wheelchairs will be healed. And people will be shouting hallelujah. What is coming? It's not even wheelchairs now. God will be creating new legs. Why well, there are no legs? You know those creepers on the street, the Lord says, just grow, 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 grow. Do you know if you do not have grace, you can backslide with that anointing? You can start calling yourself a God. <laughs> when like 50 cripples walk in your meetings every day, what are you going to do? Do you put it on the poster, nation, or senior CNN? <laughs> the only problem, those things will not be there. God will eliminate a lot of television stations. Because the Lord doesn't want people to take the glory. 
Bana Sifiwe. He doesn't want to take the glory. This will not be a show of, it will be drama of life and death. Okay? Have you seen people have been called to reverse earthquakes? Yes, I've met people who have been called to reverse earthquakes. They will reverse earthquakes. There's a man of God I know. I heard it from part of the class. He's from New Zealand, I think. He could, he had an accident. He, this car was totally smashed. Then the Lord spoke to him. Speak to that car. The car was recreated on the spot. And the Lord told him that what is coming on the earth. Because Satan will try to crush people in an accident. This is going to happen. The Lord will reverse it. The, the healing plus the car. So you continue your journey. So you're going to preach. You know, if he will heal you and the car is there, where are you going? But then this is a true story. The Lord told him, I will heal you, then also recreate the car so you continue drive. It will be this, like, things, these things you see in movies. <laughs> things are recreated like transformer. The Lord said it will happen so many times because we are alive, because God is sending to preach in our village, the Antichrist is planning to capture. So you have to go. How many want that anointing? Do you know it's a great anointing to create, recreate a metal? Yeah, I remember that guy was interviewed. He's still alive, by the way. He could recreate a piece of metal, not a human being. Hey, your frequency is higher of that thing. The Lord said, you will do it again to save many people. Okay? Can we stand up? The purpose of this teaching, don't be satisfied where you are. Please. Don't be satisfied. And the greater your calling, the greater your problems. So don't cry often. Oh, the Lord is against me. Why is it can't happen in my life? She like she lies. I like Sheila because I know you can make jokes because they are. So they come crying to me and tell them, shut up, keep quiet, rejoice, because you are being trained. Honest, she likes to come in Olivia. I told them, you, you need to overcome the parents of your, pro your problems of your father. So your problems must become great. Didn't say that one. You need to say it loudly. If you are going to overcome, then your problems will be greater than them. So that now you can become a comfort to them. You know, these things are very clear in my mind because I've learned them for seven years. They're very clear in my mind. But sometimes I struggle and I look at the church. I'm like, wow, wow, You want to still do some of these funny things. But you want to still do things of 1950s. They are good. Those people, the healing of evangelists of 50s have never been seen on the earth. Going to a children's home, everyone is healed. Then the Lord says, what is coming in the end times is much better. But because of pride, the Lord stopped it. They stop it and wait for that generation. That's why a generation has to go through greater training, greater breaking, brokenness, 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 brokenness. And the Lord uses what? Food, clothing, when you move out, you don't have shoes, you don't have school fees. The Lord says, breaking, breaking. I'm preparing an army. You, I think, it's about the food. The Lord saying, no, 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 no. Now in that generation, you'll be the one providing the food. Okay. Do you know there's a generation that's going to provide food? There's an army that has been called to create what? I've, Prophet Josh has taught it. I met three people have been told they need to create what? Silos. You know silos? Grain silos for thousands and thousands of people. Josh was given in detail. Stop this farming. You know, if you're a farmer, sorry, but I will say it. You know, I used to say in Ghana, stop farming as a hobby. Become a professional. This idea of growing one acre of food for your family, then you start thanking God, hallelujah. God said, no, I want you to feed 100 families, get a bigger farm. So they never get a bigger farm? Yeah. yeah, how will you feed the thousands if you rejoice in one plot? You hear someone has 300,000 acres. Me, I always tell God, if someone, God will pray. Either that person gets saved or they transfer. Because you need those arable land. We'll have to feed a lot of people. Another Dactari, no Dactari. I got a very strange prophetic word for Dactari. Someone sent me. And I was saying because I was like, huh, this one makes sense. The Lord said, Dactari, Dr. Makanyango is one of the few people the Lord has used because she is obedient. 
that she has personality, she'll speak once. But obedience, she doesn't joke around. She will say, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And the Lord says she has been marked. And she knows we went to her home. She, they have a very big farm. They bought it. The Lord says they're supposed to have a lot of water. Water. I will be sending people to pick fresh water. Fresh water. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor this is good. Me, I'm just telling the example. The other day I was with Pastor Ronald. He told me where he stays. He used to be supplied water by another family in the water driver. Then some he may come and duck 37 feet and found water. Now he supplies 70 homes. Then he said, where he dug the well, it's a river. Someone came to my house the other day. He was sent by a technician to look at our house because he's building a house. So he came, looked at the house, says, ah, the house is very nice. He said, where do you get water? Salty water. He said, ah, me, I went to, there's a place called Stony Ati. Chance in Okshangala. He said, when he bought land there, they found water. There's a river underground. There's a river and they are fresh water. I was saying, those are things I'm talking, my friends. They don't need to clean that water. There are underground rivers in Kitangala. Pastor Rono confirmed, that brother confirmed. And it's Tony Athi. It's Tony Athi if you don't know English. It's Tony means what? Rocks. There's nothing there, but there was an underground river. Yeah, so they combine the estate, they start, they share the water, fresh water. Those are things I'm talking about. We must believe God for the impossibilities. Please. These nice prayers we are doing are good. We are looking a place. We will never stop praying. Hallelujah. But I'm saying we look a place, we start hearing these miracles. I got a car, I got an accident, I reversed everything, the cast are running. Hey, now we can write books. That would be better than Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, some of these people are praying for, like you and the other guy. Maybe a while like that. Create for us this stuff. You see it in your mind. Give us reality. Elon Musk is someone's child, by the way. So I always say that if Elon Musk is doing it, God is not a Christian. The guy is creating unique things. His companies are very funny. I have read those companies. One is building cities underground. One is building cities on the moon. And he's just a human being. You know they can't kill him. You know you can't kill a Elon Musk. He's too valuable. The best thing is steal him. By taking where? <laughs> In America stole those people during the second They stole all the scientists from Germany. They never killed them. So you can't kill Elon Musk, steal him. Tell him come and live in Kenya and give you half of Kenya. You know he'll make Kenya very rich. You guys don't believe me. You love Kenya more than Elon Musk. Me, I like that guy. The guy is stubborn by like he'll tell a president that don't understand what you're saying. Because the technologies he's creating is what people saw. Are you understanding? He tells someone someone's child. Someone's child. Maybe you're that child. Did he go to school? I need to find out that one. Some of them don't go to school. Thomas Edison never went to school. He ran away from school in primary. Then created the electricity system. Everything from the power station, the lights, the pumping, because nothing, never, nothing existed on this land like that. He created it. He blew his father's house. I have that biography. He blew the father's house several times with those funny experiments. <laughs> but he gave us electricity, power station, lights, all those one man. I want to challenge you. We need to fight. I really feel we need to fight. Don't fight for these small things. You need to reach a place, go beyond fighting for your family. Please fight for the Lord. How many are willing to fight for the Lord? Fight for the Lord. The Lord has a kingdom to be released on this earth. And he's looking for people. And will I use you? You will be part of the army I'll be sending to China, to Mongolia, to South America to preach. Or to go rescue the sick. Or heal the sick. You have to be one of them. We are trying to be one of them. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. I want the worship team to come. As they, as they do worshiping, I don't know they're going to worship. Just go to the Lord. Let this peace sink in your spirit. There are more things that are coming on this earth. Worship the Lord.